So I'm sitting at my desk one day and I get an email that asks if I want to audition for this British reality tel television show about small businesses and entrepreneurship. And I say, why not? This could be cool for three day startup. So I have a quick call with the one. And there was this woman, when she asked me, why do I live in Austin? I told her I moved to Austin because I wanted to play in indie rock bands and do tech startups. And she's like, oh, you're, you're a musician. And I said, yeah, actually I play. And she goes, well, I'm also a casting agent for The Voice. I think you should, you should try out for this. And so I said, uh, not really interested in that. I don't want to go wait in line outside of a building for six hours. And she goes, no, 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 this will be a private audition. I'll let you in. It won't take that long. So fast forward four months later, I am walking into this North Austin studio warehouse. And as I park and walk in, I see this girl walking out with her head down, holding her guitar, which I think was going to be a foreboding of what was to come. So I walk in, sign in, and they put me in this waiting room. And in this waiting room, there's, there's three people. There's uh, one girl who's just sitting off to the side doing nothing. There is a guy named Modern Day Midas, who I, he looks like a normal guy. I think he's from Laredo or something. He looks like uh, just a normal guy, except for the fact that someone took a bike pump and plugged it into his belly and started pumping because he's got this weird kind of inflated thing right there. And then uh, there's this other guy who had just walked in. And he, my experience with this guy is he walks in sets his guitar case down and says, uh, you know, I, I thought that 2012 when X Factor happened was going to be my chance. And then I thought American Idol uh, in 2013, but I guess it's not going to be this year either. So, but he seemed like a nice guy and I actually felt bad for him. He had his hopes and dreams pinned on this. I'm just showing up for a story to see what happens. So eventually uh, I get whisked away to a different room where uh, there's a few people in line in front of me. Uh, and I think this is the line right before we actually go into the main room. There's these two girls who are really beautiful and they're, uh, they're kind of really beautiful and they know it. And, and they, they just seem really confident. Um, then there's this other guy named Cody and then me. And so these two girls get called in and they start singing an acoustic version of Black Street's No Diggity. And it was actually really, really good. Um, their voices were amazing, but they get through half the song before they walk out with their faces just like, huh. Next up is Cody. Cody goes in and he's playing some Led Zeppelin and uh, he's playing really, really loud. When those girls are playing Black Street, I could kind of barely hear it through the walls. And Cody, when he's playing uh, his song, he's singing Zeppelin and he's singing like immigrant song or something. And it's really loud, it's piercing through. It's pretty good, although a little, a little harsh. And then, uh, and then they call me in. So I get in there and I'm actually pretty nervous despite the fact that I have absolutely nothing at stake here and you know I get up top and there's this woman from New York who says like okay uh, Cam who are you you know tell me about yourself and I do that and uh, I'm definitely kind of talking like this and she goes hey it's okay just relax and so I'm like, all right whatever so these other two people sitting next to her are shrouded in darkness so I can't even see them and it it's just got this weird uh, weird feel to it so uh, the first thing I play is Bruce Springsteen's I'm on Fire. And I do okay. I'm a little tense, a little tight. Um, you know, it's never as good as when you're just sitting in your bedroom strumming, but, you know, I get through it and I remember everything. And she's like, all right, what else you got? And I say, well, I, I know Purple Rain. And she goes, ah, no, that's, that's, a, little, that's a little low. Um, what, that's a little slow for us. What, what else you got? And at this point, the only other songs that I know are songs that I wrote. I just never really bothered as a musician learning covers. I always just like to, um, like to just play and write my own songs. That was what I was interested in. Uh, but the rules of this of this audition were very explicit. You can only play cover songs, and I've now played the only two cover songs I really know. So she's like, "Well, what else you got for us?" And I said, "All right, I got a song, and I'm going to play one of my songs." And she goes, "Well, well, Cam, you have to tell us who it is." And I said, uh, well, it's a Bonnie Vair song, but uh, it's a B-side. You've never heard of it. And she goes, Cam, I'm a huge Bonnie Vair fan. Just, just tell me the name of the song. And I was like, no, you, you've never heard of it because I'm going to tell her the name of my song. She's like, no, you, you have to tell us. We need to know for the rules. And so I tell her the name of my song. And she goes, oh, yeah, I know that one. And that's when I realized, okay, there's something going on here. This woman is, uh, I don't think she's messing with me. I just realized that, you know, she's flexing a little bit uh, about something that she does not know. So... 
I play my song, and I actually play that one okay because it's my song and I, I know it. Um, again, I don't think I'm great, but I, I get through it. And uh, she's like, all right, well, what else you got? So I play one more song, and again, one of my songs, and, but uh, this time I tell her it's the Tallest Man on Earth song, and again, another kind of random B-side. And I get through, I, I get halfway through it, and she says, hey, uh, thanks. You know, we, our advice to you would be work on your vocal consistency, uh, which I think she was right about. Uh, but long story short, uh, I did not make it to audition for The Voice, but it was a cool experience. Uh, although like really heartbreaking to see all these other people who have their hopes and dreams pinned on making it big and having to uh, call it in. So anyway, uh, peace.